In this video, I want to talk about degrees and radians. Most likely, you're already familiar with the system of degrees that we use to describe circular motion. For example, we talk about making a 90 degree turn when we drive, we're turning left or turning right. We say that if you turn 180 degrees, it means you're facing in the opposite direction. And if somebody turns 360 degrees, then they've gone in a full circle. In sports like snowboarding, skiing, and figure skating, we talk about making turns greater than 360 degrees, like a 540, which is one and a half full turns, or a 720, which is two full turns. Now in mathematics, we have a very specific starting place on the coordinate axis for zero degrees, and that is the positive x-axis. So if we are on the positive x-axis, we are at an angle of zero degrees. We measure the other angles in a counterclockwise direction to go from zero degrees to 360 degrees, which is all the way around. So when we go to the positive y-axis, we are at an angle of 90 degrees. When we go to the negative x-axis, we're at an angle of 180 degrees. When we go to the negative y-axis, we're at an angle of 270 degrees. And when we come all the way back to the x-axis, we're at an angle of 360 degrees. And of course, we can have angles everywhere in between that as well. Now, if we were to travel in a clockwise direction instead, we would actually talk about the angles in a negative manner. So for example, if I was to um, start on the x-axis and move 45 degrees down from the x-axis, then that would be negative 45 degrees because I'm moving in a clockwise direction instead of a counterclockwise direction. One other note is that we have names for the four quadrants of the coordinate plane. The quadrant where everything is positive is called quadrant one. The quadrant where the y values are positive and the x values are negative is called quadrant two. The quadrant where both x and y values are negative is quadrant three. And the quadrant where x values are positive and y values are negative is quadrant four. Now, we have a second system in mathematics for measuring the angle or turn, and that's called radians. Now, you might recall the circumference of a circle is given by the formula 2 pi r. So if a circle has a radius of just 1, as in the diagrams below, the circumference would be 2 pi times 1, or just 2 pi. So if you can imagine being a little person walking around on this circle, so starting at the point one comma zero and moving in a circle in a counterclockwise direction, the next axis point we would go through would be the point zero comma one on our traveling around. And as we move further and further around this circle, as you can see in the second diagram and the third diagram, on our continued walk around the circle, we would then get to the next axis value of negative one comma zero. And that would be at an angle of 180 degrees, and at that point we would have traveled a distance of pi because we would be exactly halfway around the circle. So the distance traveled to get from 1 comma 0 to negative 1 comma 0, moving in a counterclockwise fashion around a circle of radius 1, would be pi as a distance. If we continue to go around the circle, imagining that we're taking a little walk around the circle, when we get back to the x-axis, in other words, when we made a full circle through all of the points, so starting at 1, 0, then going through 0, 1, then traveling through negative 1, 0, and then finally 0, negative 1, and back to 1, comma 0, then we would have gone 360 degrees, but we would have traveled a distance of 2 pi on this circle. And so we use fractions of pi to also describe our journey around a circle in terms of the angle that we've traveled. This system is called radians, and it's based on a full circle being an angle of 2 pi. It's used as an alternative measurement to degrees, and it's very useful for a lot of the calculations we have in mathematics. So just remember that 2 pi in radians corresponds to 360 in degrees. And if we look at those axis values the same way we did for degrees, when we've gone 90 degrees from the x-axis to the positive y-axis, we would call this a distance of 1 half pi or pi over 2. 
when we travel a distance from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis, that angle that we've gone through to get to this point on the negative x-axis is an angle of pi. We've gone exactly halfway around the circle. When we go through an angle of 270 degrees, then we're actually at one and a half pi, or three halves pi, or what we often write as three pi over two. And then when we make it all the way back to where we started, we've gone 360 degrees or traveled two pi in distance. So we call that angle two pi. So as we work our way around the circle, uh, instead of zero, 90, 180, 270, 360, we're talking about zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, and two pi. You'll learn more about why we use this system of radians when we first introduce trig functions, but for now let's just practice marking out our angles in terms of either degrees or radians. We're going to start with 45 degrees because that's a commonly used measurement of an angle. The easiest way to measure out 45 degrees is just to break the top half of the coordinate plane into four equal sections. They look kind of like four pieces of equal pi pieces in a pi. In radians, each section is one fourth of the way to pi because pi is, so I'm starting at zero degrees. When I go to the first fourth, I'm at one fourth pi, or we often write that as pi over four. When I get to the next pi piece, I'm at two fourths pi, and we can simplify the two fourths to be one half pi, and we write that typically as pi over two. The next one would be 3 fourths pi, which we typically write as 3 pi over 4. And then, like I said, we get to pi. So when we count that out, we'd have 0 pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi. But do remember that you can easily count it as 0, 1 fourth pi, 2 fourths pi, 3 fourths pi, pi. So we're literally just counting around the number of fourths. Once we pass pi, then we can just keep counting by one-fourth pies. So we were at pi, or four-fourths pi. The next one would be five-fourths pi, then six-fourths pi, then seven-fourths pi, then eight-fourths pi. And of course, we can rewrite all of these with the pi in the numerator. So five-fourths pi, we could write as five pi over four. 6 fourths pi could be simplified to be 3 pi over 2. Remember, we actually already knew that one. 7 fourths pi could be rewritten as 7 pi over 4. And 8 fourths pi is the exact same thing as 2 pi. So again, starting with pi, the next one is 5 pi over 4, then 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then 2 pi. Remember that there's nothing that stops you from just counting 4 fourths pi, 5 fourths pi, 6 fourths pi, 7 fourths pi, 8 fourths pi. So using that technique, we can actually count around the entire circle, just counting by fourth pies to get all the way to where we started. Now let's see what degrees and radians counted out by this step size of 45 degrees or pi over four would look like if we just mark them on a horizontal axis. So if we count the axis scale in degrees, so we have a horizontal axis marked with 180 degrees and 360 degrees, we can first start by marking out the 90 degree points. So 90 degrees would be halfway between zero and 180 and 270. 270 degrees would be halfway between 180 and 360. And now let's mark out the 45 degree mark. So halfway between 0 and 90 would be 45 degrees. Halfway between 90 and 180 would be 135 degrees. Halfway between 180 and 270 would be 225 degrees. And halfway between 270 and 360 would be 315 degrees. Now we have a horizontal axis that goes from 0 to 2 pi with pi marked in the middle and it's marked exactly where 180 degrees is. Let's mark out the axis values first. So halfway between zero and pi would be pi over two, and halfway between pi and two pi would be three pi over two. That's one half pi and one and a half pies. Then between zero and pi over two, we would have pi over four. That's one fourth pi. 
And again, if you imagine just counting up by fourths, you have one fourth pi followed by two fourths pi, that's the pi over two, followed by three fourths pi, which we write as three pi over four, four fourths pi, which is just the same thing as pi, five fourths pi would be halfway between pi and three pi over two, we write that as five pi over four, and then the next one would be six fourths pi, which simplifies to be three pi over two, and then seven fourths pi or seven pi over four, and then eight fourths pi, which would be two pi. So just reading the simplified forms across the x-axis, we would have first zero radians, then pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi, five pi over four, three pi over two, seven pi over four, and two pi. These are much easier to construct by taking halves as you go than by just counting it left to right.